What's up guys, Rogue9 here and today I want to talk about the problem with Zofia and her recent nerf. If you're a fan of her all-round skill set and her ability to be played independently while solo queuing, you will doubtlessly have felt the nerf to her rifle's recall quite intensely. It is without a doubt a controversial change that has disappointed a lot of fans and in this video I want to break down the issues I see with this style of update to the game. Once again, many thanks to Nvidia and Alienware for sponsoring the video and there will be another little segment where I talk about the awesome new graphics systems available in Rainbow Six Siege and how you can take advantage of them. So to break down what has happened to Zofia with the last patch, why it happened and why I'm really concerned about the update, let's go step by step. What happened is really simple. They made the recoil of her main weapon significantly harder to handle than before. Of course, everyone can have their own opinions on whether or not it is still manageable, but I personally feel that the recoil is no joke now and pretty challenging to use at medium to long range, certainly when compared to the rest of the recoil patterns in Siege. Why was she nerfed like this? The first and foremost reason is that after Ash's pick rate has finally fallen this season, Zofia has become the de facto replacement as the entry fragging solo queue queen. Nerfing operators that are seen as too popular is nothing new in Siege and I will touch on that topic in a bit but let's first explore the designer notes to see what other reasons the devs give for messing with Zofia. Uh, looking at the balancing matrix, uh, Zofia continues to have a very high presence which is due in part to the high fragging potential and uh, ease of use of her M760. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, frog boy, let me stop you right there because that is some grade A merde de cheval. The ease of use of her M762, what are you talking about? One of the key defining aspects of Rainbow Six Siege gunplay is that every Ever since they fixed the weapon misalignment issue in Year 3 Season 3, the recoil for the vast majority of guns in the game has been incredibly consistent and easy to manage. There are only a tiny handful of weapons where the recoil is a real hindrance, so claiming that the M762 is unusually easy to handle is just nonsense. In order to bring her more in line with the other operators, her M762's recoil has been increased, uh, making it uh, harder to control. In line with what other operators? What, Buck? Twitch? Okay, surely Ella and a few machine pistols, but what else? I can literally count on one hand the number of operators that have truly difficult recalls. So how, how does this nerf have anything to do with bringing Zofia down to everyone else's level? This entire line of arguing is total and utter nonsense, if you ask me, but it is what it is. The next claim that they make is that the new recoil is actually more predictable than usual. I've spent some time testing and trying to master this new, more challenging, yet supposedly more predictable recoil, and I'm not really convinced. With flash hider and vertical grip attached, we get probably the best recoil compression, but in terms of predictability, the horizontal spread looks more or less the same as most other weapons in the game. Sure, there are definitely worse ones, but there is nothing in this pattern here that screams at me, this will be so much easier to learn. So, another claim debunked. When it comes to practically managing the recoil, the gun is definitely much harder to handle than most. Initially I tried to use my old setup of flash hider and angled grip and that was definitely an interesting experience. I personally feel that in order to have any chance at making good use of the M762, most players will now have to use the vertical grip and once you do, like I said, the recoil is bad but not the worst. I fired some other guns back to back with the M762 to try and gauge the recoil relative to that of other weapons and I would say that Buck C8 is definitely more challenging to handle due to the lack of grip attachment. And all in all, the difficulty level of the M762 with vertical grip of course felt about the same as Twitch's F2. It's much more than most guns for sure and will severely limit your long range chances but at short to medium range it remains usable. Not great, but usable. 
So there's the why and how, but is it really necessary to nerf overpicked operators even if they're underpowered? I'm kind of on the fence here. First of all, it depends on the reason for the high pick rate. If a character is overpowered and that's why everyone wants to play them, then of course nerf them. It's a no-brainer. Balance is important. But what if a character is played a lot because people nowadays just don't stack as much as they used to, and with the Russian roulette we all get to play whenever teaming up with randoms, it makes complete sense that versatile, self-sufficient operators get picked more often, and I personally think that's not really a bad thing. At this point, the devs and all the rest of us need to admit that the scene is changing. The players who are still left are seeing more and more of their friends move on from the game and it is becoming more and more challenging to find a decent stack. That makes solo queue friendly operators more important than ever. And I get it, Siege is meant to be a strategy and cooperation heavy game, but when you get matched up with random teammates that level of cooperation just isn't very viable anymore, and when you relentlessly nerf these self-sufficient characters, there's only one of two things that can happen. Either the community adapts and starts making the effort to find new stacks to squad up with, or players will simply become frustrated that the small handful of operators that they could pick whenever they couldn't rely on their teammates is being taken away from them and they will simply stop playing. I'll give you two guesses which of those is the more likely outcome. So long story short, while I understand that trying to force more balanced pick rates and more cooperation seems like a worthwhile goal, I fear that this strategy is incredibly risky. It reduces accessibility for less experienced players or those who are no longer stacking and given the cliff edge that Siege is wandering along right now, the chance of these nerfs backfiring is real. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, I am digging into the new NVIDIA graphics settings that we have available in Rainbow Six Siege, dedicated standalone video coming soon, and today I want to quickly walk you through the DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling setting, what it does and how you can benefit from it. As the name suggests, DLSS is an AI-driven rendering technology that taps into dedicated processors in GeForce RTX graphics cards to boost your frame rates while at the same time providing crisp and sharp images in your favorite games, including Rainbow Six Siege. This technology is particularly effective when you're running your game at larger resolutions such as 4K or even 8K. I tested the DLSS modes in Rainbow Six Siege in 4K resolutions and these are the results. I achieved for various settings. Pretty neat. I have to say as well though, when I tested the system using the Alienware 25 360Hz monitor, I did not really see any significant improvement because my 3080 graphics card can easily handle 1080p anyway. So depending on your system and which resolution you're running at, I would definitely recommend you quickly run Siege's graphics benchmark with and without DLSS to check if the system will benefit you. And that's our little NVIDIA technology update for today, back to our discussion of Zofia. So that earlier was my general take on nerfing popular operators, but let me also say a word or two on the new trend of making guns less fun to use, because that's what these changes are, right? After years of trying to nerf overpicked operators like Ash and Jaeger, the devs have finally resorted to the one lever that they know will work make guns frustrating to use. All it takes is one or two rounds where a player loses a gunfight because their weapon kicked off in a weird and unexpected direction, and the frustration and disappointment will make them not want to play that character anymore. And as effective as this method is, it is also a very obvious double-edged sword, and getting this kind of change right is almost impossible. Make the nerf too weak, and it basically has no effect at all. As long as I can still win my gunfights, who cares? Go slightly overboard with the recoil and now you've added a massive dose of RNG into what is supposed to be a highly competitive and well-balanced game. And the frustration from that 
cuts both ways. It feels absolutely terrible to do everything right but lose a gunfight because of random recoil, but on the flip side, if you die and get to watch a replay of some guy aiming three feet past you and just getting a lucky spray, also feels like you've been cheated. So the bottom line is that messing with recoil can very quickly lead to a frustrating experience, and while that is a very powerful tool in order to reduce operator pick rate, the current shaky state of Rainbow Six Siege quite desperately needs the game to become more fun and more accessible, and going into a fight with a challenging gun while just about every other character is still using laser beams is not a great experience. What do you think about Finker's recoil nerf and the practice of chopping down the most popular operators in general? Let me know in the comments section below, and with that, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.